Well, here we are again, YouTube. Uh, I got my vehicle here. Um, I'm gonna show you my camera system. I got my security and my small one's my backup camera. And I got my network antennas up there too. And give you a good look at the stealth rig here, my stealth vehicle, so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, nice. Just put new tires and ball joints and everything on this thing. New shocks. Here's another one of the wireless cameras. Uh, right there. One on both sides, one in the back, one up front. And then here's your remote control unit. So when you hit this button, it just turns them on. And then they turn on. So you'll probably come over here and you'll probably see the light. sure if that light shows or not and then you come inside come inside my crib <laughs> yeah what do you think of that man the crib 32 inch TV there's my driver shirts back there and then you come back here it's pretty dark because you know everything is sealed let me turn on a turn on a light here Okay, it's going to be kind of dark, but you'll see what I'm talking about on my camera security system. And then right next to my bed here is my camera system. And then she'll come on, and there we go. Uh, you know, it doesn't look as good as when it's in person, but that's it there. Then you can, uh, you can switch between camera modes whatever you want to do um, there as you can see my generator box right there from the back and you got so you can lay in bed and you can see everything that goes on in front of you and now you can see all the the red LED the lights that came on that means everything is recording right now so yeah then I got my big 32 inch TV right there I got some compartments right there so pretty cool so that's how that works we could you know go through the whole thing a little later but uh, I'll just kind of give you the lowdown of, of what this thing can do and then we have uh, oh let's take a look here doing all this live so not gonna do any video editing at all none at all then the other monitor right here and you just turn it on and then once it comes on you don't have to really do anything it just comes on and you can actually come over here and hold this down and touch it and then the screen usually turns on there we go and that's my my front camera see so that looks at my driver's door that's the front view and I don't have the other two on but so if, let me focus this thing in there we go so there we go so somebody breaks in you got them on freaking video so that's my secondary uh, security camera system then if you just kill the like that it'll come in it'll program itself and save all the video so that's my secondary system so if I leave or go in the store I can turn both camera systems on but the one by the bed is the one you almost have to when you turn on the power you got to hit the button to turn the DVR on this one you don't have to do anything you just hit the power button and it turns on and starts recording all day long so that's why I did two systems so uh, there's my nice air conditioner right there that thing is nice I got a backup monitor here, TV, showed you that in some of the other old videos. Okay, I had to move my seat thing out of the way. But other than that, not too bad. Not too bad for my living situations. Works out really good. It's bigger than anything you think. I mean, on a video, I mean, we're running this at 1080p. Uh, I don't know 
if my back hatch is open. Oh, it is. Oh, my shirts are in the way. Let's come over this way. You can get a better kind of a daytime look in there. There we go. There's a nice look. And I kind of got a jockey box thing right there. I just throw all my bed, but you can see there, you can see there's my backup charging system behind my monitor, auxiliary phone, another phone, my monitor, my TV, and then if I could get over on the other side, you would see the bottom area of my bed right there. All those compartments are under the bed. And by the way, that's a self-leveling bed, so it doesn't matter where I park or what angle I'm parked on, the bed will self-align itself. So you're always in a neutral position. You're never in a position where it's you're too high. So that's some of the lowdown on the rig. Uh, so I thought I'd show you the camera system today. There's other things I'd like to show you. Uh, oh, the generator. I uh, ran everything in right here. So you know you got your you got your power going in. And then you got a plug over here from your generator to the inside of the cab. But then I did one better thing. I also made it go up to the front bumper. So if I wanted to plug into an outlet, I got either the front bumper or the rear bumper to do it with. So it makes it a little more incognito. So if you're plugged in from the front, it just looks like you know, somebody's got engine problems or battery problems and they need to plug in their vehicle. If you plug it in from the back, well, it's kind of a dead giveaway what you're doing. So... So that's what I do there. And then I got the auxiliary extension cord for just in case for plugging in reasons. And then the handy dandy Yamaha. Very nice. Extra bottle of oil right there. I change the oil in that thing all the time. Even when it's not needed, even when it doesn't need changed, I change it anyway. Uh, and then my three antennas up there. That's uh my amplified TV signal system and boy it, it works great uh, it cost me about 80 bucks I weatherproofed it sealed it and I've been up there for almost two years now well close to that never had any problems I get all cha uh, digital TV channels from far away so I get like 60 to 60 to 65 TV channels crystal clear they come in nice so I don't have any problems with that but other than that uh, that's kind of the lowdown on kind of what the rig looks like a little bit inside. The generator for power, auxiliary system under the hood. So I installed a solenoid so every time the engine runs, you know, it charges my auxiliary battery. But I can't show you that. I wish I could because it's all built under the bed. So I have three Optima batteries built under the bed. So anytime the engine runs, it charges them. Anytime the generator runs, it turns on the battery charger and starts to charge the... Uh, the auxiliary system or if you're plugged in to a wall it also starts to charge here so no matter what you do your auxiliary system is always being charged and so that's a nice feature so I've always got power and I don't run inverters I don't have a microwave in here I, I never used the one in the van much popcorn but I use inverters I use 100 watt by the way that 32 inch TV is running off only a uh, 100 watt inverter only 100 watt and that's with the amplified antenna system and the TV running all together. So, I use these guys right here. It's only 100 watts. That's it. You can pick them up at Walmart. And that runs the TV and the amplifier. That's it. If I had a 2500 watt inverter or anything, or a 400 or a 600, you're just wasting battery. You're just, you know, it takes a lot of battery juice to, to energize those kind of inverters. But when you're using 100 watt for certain things, certain items, then you don't need to, uh, then you don't need to uh, be running those big inverters. There's no reason to have everything plugged into an inverter and then be using up your battery auxiliary system when you just go from one to the other so I think I got like four different inverters in there and when I need to use something that's the inverter that gets fired up instead of having one central inverter to where it just kills everything when you leave it on this way it doesn't you can serve 
battery power all the time. I'm always 12.5, 12.6 volts, even overnight running dual fans. I'm, those fans that you get at Walmart, the, the 11, 12 dollar ones, them are great little fans. I've got two of them in here, and you can run them for days, and they will never hardly even use an amp for the whole night. You're still fully charged. So that's pretty good. I like my tires, man. I just bought these things about three weeks ago. And then they uh, put new shocks and everything on the thing too. So that's pretty cool. Went in here, went in there and they put some shocks in there. And so you gotta take care of the rig because you know, you gotta live in it. So you gotta throw a little money in it every now and then. But anyway, let's take a look up front here. I keep it clean. It's clean over there is my bus driving equipment. And uh, I keep my laundry bag over there for the laundry mat just throw all my laundry in it but I try to keep it as clean up front as I can not a bad rig I got 145,000 miles on this when I bought it almost two years ago it only had 136,000 miles on it so I haven't even put 10,000 miles on this thing yet so not bad so anyway we'll uh now I got my curtains, two of them, summer, winter, uh, or complete darkness. I use them both. Shut, you know, shed out all that light. You don't want anybody seeing. The reason why I went with the same color interior is on the curtains is so when they're closed and you come outside the rig and somebody walks by, they can't see. They can't see the back. It just looks, it looks cut off. So as you walk up to the vehicle or if you're in a parking lot, somebody walks by, they can't see a, a red or a white or a different colored sheet hanging there. Then they know somebody's back there. But when it's the same color as the vehicle, the interior, well, hell, it just goes with the vehicle. So your driver's seats will always show. And then the back is just dark. You can't tell. So it doesn't look obvious. And these windows, of course, 0% tint. Front ones are not legal, but I never have any problems with it because it's an SUV. They're about 20%. These are zero with the window inserts, by the way. And I had to take this rain reflector off up here because my air conditioner vents out up there when I use it. So, so all right, folks. I'll, uh, I'll get back with you on the next uh, quick video. And I'll keep them coming. All righty.